Hi, and welcome back to the Food Fund, where we explore all things related to investing in food and beverage stocks. If you are new here, our goal is to help you put your money where your mouth is and invest in great companies. If you love food and love stocks, you will definitely love this channel. In this video we will be doing an analysis of Brown Foreman Corp and seeing if it would be a great addition to the food fund. Be sure to watch through the end of the video where I share my final thoughts on that. Now, let's go ahead and jump right in. Cue the logo. Let's start with some background info on Brown Foreman Corporation. Brown Foreman was founded in 1870 by George Garvin Brown with the company's first product being Old Forester Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Brown Foreman grew to become one of the largest spirits companies in the world holding brands such as Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey, Woodford Reserve Kentucky Bourbon, and Finlandia Vodka. Today the company is headquartered in Louisville, Kentucky and has over 4,700 employees operating in more than 70 countries. Now let's look at the price action. Starting with the one year chart we see that Brown Foreman had a cager of about minus 7%. Zooming out to the 5 year chart we see that Brown Foreman had a cager of 4%. Brown Foreman share price has been climbing over the long term but has been in a pullback for the last 2 and a half years. This may represent a good buying opportunity. Let's explore more by looking at the fundamentals. Gross margin is 59%. This is very good. Revenue has compounded at around 6% over the past 5 years and has reached nearly $4.3 billion most recently. Good revenue growth and great gross margins make this even more intriguing. Looking at free cash flow we see a minus 17% cager over the last 5 years while capex has increased at a cager of 13%. So free cash flow has diminishing pretty rapidly over time while capex is increasing. Stock based compensation has also been increasing at around a 6% cager. This is not good. Now let's turn our attention to share count. Changes in weighted average shares outstanding have been negligible going from 482 million shares in 2019 to 480 million shares most recently. I would have preferred to have seen diminishing share count but with the falling free cash flow share buybacks may prove difficult. Now let's view return on invested capital. Return on invested capital has fallen from 21.2% in 2018 to 15.7% in 2023, while 15.7% is a reasonable return on invested capital. The rapid fall over the last 5 years is extremely worrisome. I am starting to see why the share price has been on a decline over the last couple of years. Another favorite metric is cash conversion cycle, a measure of operational efficiency regarding supplier and payer leverage as well as inventory control. Going from 483 days in 2018 to 427 days most recently, Brown Foreman is improving its efficiency despite the high cash conversion cycle. I think the high cash conversion cycle value is due to the aging process in producing spirits. We will confirm this in our analysis of other alcohol companies in the future. Last, let's explore Brown Foreman's debt. The net debt to EBITDA is reasonable at 2 and is largely unchanged from 2018 when it was 1.8. Brown Foreman seems to have a pretty solid balance sheet. So, the fundamentals of Brown Foreman are not great but the company has existed for a very long time and has survived many market downturns over the years. In any event, should it be added to the portfolio? Before sharing my final thoughts on that, please click the like button and let YouTube know that you like the content. Subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you catch the latest videos. Your continued support means so much to the food fund. Now, let's get into my final thoughts. Okay, let's go to the spreadsheet and write out some key values for Brown Foreman. It is a beverage company with a gross margin of 59%. The 5 year revenue per share cager is 6% and the 5 year free cash flow per share cager is minus 17%. While the gross margin and revenue growth are decent the free cash flow fall is a big red flag for me. A return on invested capital of 16% is ok but the 5 year decline is very worrisome. Next, the cash conversion cycle of 427 days is very high for me and frankly a huge turn off from investing in this company. Concerning debt, a net debt to EBITDA of 2 means that Brown Foreman could pay off all of their debts with about 2 years of earnings. So from a fundamental standpoint, 
Brown Foreman is poor. Now let's switch our attention over to valuation. Brown Foreman is a bit expensive relative to the S&P 500 with a ratio of 1.6. The price to earnings growth, or PEG ratio, is 3.8 which again confirms that Brown Foreman is a little overvalued compared to its projected earnings growth. Brown Foreman clearly has strong brand value given its high gross margin and high value relative to the S&P 500 and its PEG ratio. The rapid free cash flow and return on invested capital decline is a huge turn off for me. Despite decent growth and great growth margin, operating costs are slowly bludgeoning this company. I now see why both Michael Lindzel and Terry Smith have stopped adding and have begun slowly selling off their positions. For me the legacy of the historic company and strong brand value are not enough to offset falling free cash flow. This company will not be going on the watch list. Many thanks for watching. What do you think about Brown Foreman and its free cash flow decline? Please share your thoughts below. It is always great to hear from you. Please check out some more videos right now and don't forget to put your money where your mouth is.